Welcome back to another action-packed episode of Comic Confidential. I'm your host, Cade Moy. Alongside me today is the seventh member of the Justice League, Troy Spinner. And the eighth member. The eighth member. Unite the seven. I think they did that. Dunno. Can't count. Uh, and But I'm the eighth, the un... Known and um, the wild card, the wild card, I'm yeah, the wild card eighth member of the Justice League. Uh, f- fat man, what's your power? Uh, eating the ability <laughs> the- to consume all the calories. Yes, I can consume all the car- calories and um, uh, also put on all the weight <laughs> associated wow. with that. Yeah, sound like a regular human being, uh, but you, you do know. that like I guess three times better, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Wow. Uh, what about you? What's your superpower? Uh, I like to think I'm mediocre man. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't do anything great, but I don't do anything terrible. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. always just mediocre. Everything you do is just straight down the line. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I'll never impress you, but I'll never let you down either. <laughs> That's actually not a bad superpower. Yeah. If you if you think about all the things you've ever done in your life that have actually let people down. You wouldn't have that. It's actually pretty great. Because pretty much, like, neither of us have ever really done anything that's overly impressed anyone either at the moment. Yeah, that's anyway, right. So, yeah. But we've got this show. This, that's a thing. Well, that is a thing. Some people Mediocre like it. Mediocre Man like strikes it. again. Hey, all right. <laughs> uh, what's been happening, my friend? Mate, what's what's I am, happening in your world? I'm officially on holidays. Oh, my God. Yeah, so uh, two weeks of absolute bliss for this hairy boy. Excellent. Uh, and if you are just joining us for the first time ever in your life, uh, Cade is on hol- holidays to Vanuatu, uh, living it up like a rich man, unlike the rest of us who have to slog away at um, whatever we do in oh, our regular you plebs. Worlds, all us plebs. Uh, and that's exactly why we're here today doing Justice League. The day after it drops, well, for us, it's for us. a couple of days for you guys, uh, because we wanted to get it in before this guy disappears, possibly forever. Because who knows what happens in Vanuatu. Right? Right. Yeah. So that's why we're here. We're going to do non-spoilers, naturally. We're going to do non-spoilers. The movie literally just came out. Days ago. Days ago. And uh, then we're going to do the normal spoilery shit where we're going to get into the good, good. I cannot wait. I have so many things to say about this movie. Do you? And I feel like I'm, I'm triggering people already. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just by saying Just that. by saying that. Well, this is what happened. You've set the precedent with your Thor Ragnarok review where you loved it and recommended people go see it, but didn't actually rate the movie. Yeah. Uh, putting it alongside things like The Mummy and uh, Assassin's Creed. I'm going to stand by it too. That's fine, man. You uh, you stick to your guns, girl. You do that. Uh, today, uh, look, we haven't actually spoken about this movie at all, really. A couple of little things, you and I. Um, but I think we're going to go into it completely blind. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Which could pretty much just end up with a very similar sort of outcome to Thor Ragnarok where you just bagged it, I just defended it. We didn't actually review the movie at all. Yeah. And that was it. Hey, look, that review will be coming once it hits <laughs> uh, digital download. Look, but we're gonna do it a uh, we're gonna do it we're gonna do it the normal way today. I think. I think. I think so. we're gonna get in there. Like, I'm excited to do this one. Look, if it helps, I took no notes. Oh wow! Yeah. So this is all just guess like, what? Me neither. Wow! But it does help. We just watched the movie last night, so it's all fresh in my yeah. mind. It's all fresh in my mind. Right. I guess. Right. We'll you find guess. out. <laughs> we'll find Stay out. Stay tuned enough. for this thrilling outcome. <laughs> Uh, do you want to get into some nudes? Uh, news? Uh, yeah, I want to get into some nudes. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're going to kick it off with um, a little bit of Justice League-ish type of segue there. Uh, Warner Brothers have officially moved up the release date of their highly anticipated Wonder Woman sequel from December the 13th, 2019 to November the 1st, 2019. Some sources are reporting that it's a move made to avoid conflicting with December 20th Star Wars Episode Nine. However, the date is one that Warner Brothers already had set aside for a DC movie release and the move now allows Wonder Woman to have currently zero box office competition. What do you think about this? Smart move. Definitely a smart move. This is the smartest thing that uh, Warner Brothers has probably done in the longest time. Yep. Um, this is going to make all the money, Troy. Oh, hell yes. Uh well, we already know confirmed Patty Jenkins is returning to yeah. direct. Gal Gadot has officially signed on, even though there was a little bit of like, will she, won't she, because of the whole Brett Ratner controversy, which we won't even get into, because I've been saying for years, Brett Ratner's a fucking dick. So it doesn't matter. 
you have gone on the record. I have gone on the record. Uh, well, you made X Men: The Last Stand, man. Like you know, we got kind X Two. What kind of dickhead does that? Exactly. Um, but yeah, so we know like all the pieces are in place for this to be great. And now they're they're doing the really smart thing. And even if it is a move to move it away from Episode Nine, why the hell wouldn't you do that if you had the opportunity? Exactly. And they've kind of seen. Well, I'm not saying they have, but we have seen the money that can be made in November with um, uh, the Thor Ragnarok release, exactly. which has made all the money right now. Um, and it's on track to outpace uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, Ooh. I believe. So yeah, so it's a really smart move. So stay away from that Star Wars and that Lucasfilm juggernaut and go into a, like an empty space where there's no competition and just soak it up. You know what? I think this is going to be something we see more often now that we've got these, I guess, annual releases for these. Star Wars movies. Yeah. That you, you're probably going to be a safe bet. They're always going to drop at Christmas time because that's when they're going to make the most money. Yeah. I think... Exception to the rule would be Solo, uh, yeah. which is a mid-year drop, I think. Is it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. But um, even so, these other Star Wars movies that are coming out, this new trilogy that will be happening... I have no doubt that they're all going to drop in December. Um, I think it's good for moviegoers too because my wallet is light AF (laughs) at this time of the year. So um, I'm happy that I can kind of space out my my movie going adventures and budget for that a little bit better. Yeah, for sure. And I think you're right in the sense that we'll see more and more of this. I think what we'll also see more and more is these studios snatching up release dates with the with the like the kind of I guess without having the foresight of what else is being released, yeah. they can pick one. Go, yes, this is when we're going to drop. Oh no, wait, this studio is dropping something absolutely massive. So now we're going to pull it back and you know put it in this release date instead, which is pretty much what they've done here. Yeah. So I think we'll see more and more of that. Very smart move. Very much looking forward to Wonder Woman two when it comes out. Now, according to Deadline, I mean, this is. <laughs> This is either really interesting or it's not interesting at all, but it's weird and and I like it and we're going to talk about it. So that's happening. Oh, okay. Okay. But according to Deadline, Fox is developing a feature film which will see James Franco playing the Marvel Comics mutant Multiple Man with Wonder Woman scribe Alan Heinberg writing the script and Simon Kinberg and his genre films producing. Multiple Man Jamie Madrox would be set within Fox's X-Men universe and due to the character's relationship with Professor X and constant conflict slash team-ups, with the X-Men, it is likely characters from the franchise would cross over. Now, what do you know about Multiple Men? Fuck all. That's probably most people. I think there's a lot of people out there right now that are just like, not right now, but today when the news dropped. A lot like, of Googling. Yeah, a lot of Googling. Multiple Man was definitely trending. Yeah. It was actually not... trending on Twitter. Was it really? Yeah. And there were a few people that like, you know, they've kind of like woken up to Multiple Man trending and they're like, what the hell is happening? Damn. Has the world fallen on its head? Did Trump make a new treat? Oh, maybe. Ooh. Who knows? Let's not get political. Hey, hey almost. That's, that, that's our one political thing for All the right. year. All right, that's it. Done. Um, yeah, so Multiple Man is kind of like... Do you remember X-Men The Last Stand very well? Uh, give me a quick one-minute wrap-up. No. What I'm going to <laughs> So, effectively, there's this, there's this section where the government is converging on this uh, camp of... Uh, mutants yes right? uh, if you remember that and there's one scene where it's kind of like it's uh, like one of those infrared shots or whatever it is and they can see multiple mutants and they're like all right we've got them we've found the camp let's converge and they converge on it and all of a sudden it's just they all the all the little dots start oh, to disappear yeah, and, it's I multiple remember men, this. and it all comes back to the one dude yeah that's multiple men there you go <laughs> so he has the ability to instantly clone himself awesome yeah it's a good he it's must good be thing. really productive yeah oh you, you'd get so much done but here's the thing. Think about all the Francos. Oh. All the Francos you could have in this movie. It would be amazing. Well, oh. If you're going to pick a guy, why wouldn't you pick James Franco? Okay, Who doesn't want to see multiple James Francos? I, I only want him to be James Franco, though. I don't want him to be playing someone. I just want him to be that like real laid-back, half-stoner guy approach. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of a conversation on um, the Facebook community... Uh, between myself, Chris, I want to say, and Steve, if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure I got you guys, um, where it was kind of like, imagine all the Francos from different movies. Yeah. Like the Pineapple Express Franco. Oh my God. And then it's like, you know, that sort of thing. That would be amazing. Yeah. So the, the Spider-Man Franco, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
So if he did that... So we've got a Franco-verse going on now. Oh, man. Imagine. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> so while on the surface, uh, somebody spending copious amounts of money to make a multiple man movie might seem silly, uh, but if you throw James Franco into the mix, uh, you've probably got yourself a sure-fired winner. Yeah. Okay. You've hooked me now. Right. Uh, so look out for that in the future. Uh, it's all it, it's underway. Like this is this is not something that started like production or anything. Obviously, uh, it's in the very early stages. But everybody is very keen to get this off the ground to the point that uh, James Franco is producing himself as well. Is he really part of his company that he owns with his brothers? Uh, his brother. Yeah, they're producing as well. So. The unknown Franco. No, Dave Franco. Yeah, the unknown one, mate. But the lesser known Franco. Yeah. There's probably there's literally. Like a Gary Franco that nobody knows anything about. It's like the there. Lost Baldwin. Well, yeah, it's the the Lost Baldwin or the other Hemsworth brother. Oh, imagine being the other Hemsworth brother. Yeah, apparently though, Chris Hemsworth says he's uh, stronger and better looking. So you know, yeah, but he's probably just saying that. His mum made him say yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move into some trailer talk because uh, we've got some we got some stuff. Yeah, we got a couple this we got week. A couple this week. So ABC has released our first look at the upcoming fifth season of Agents of Shield, set to return to our screens, not our screens in Australia, uh, but you know the world. Uh, with a two-hour premiere at the start of December, uh, we've got alien references, we've got Cree, we've got an almost Guardians of the Galaxy vibe going on. I reckon. What did you think? Yeah, I uh, I had a very much a Guardians of the Galaxy vibe with this, and I feel like this is kind of how Marvel's going to be moving forward with everything, with yeah. the uh, lackluster, I guess, response from Inhumans. By the way, which wrapped up last week, I haven't gone past. Very disappointing. I, I swear to God, I have not gone past 10 minutes of the first episode yet. I've never seen someone be so expressive with their eyes than the uh, the guy that plays Black Bolt. Yeah. Because he's like, surprised eyes, angry <laughs> eyes, disappointed <laughs> the, eyes. Sad eyes? Does he have sad eyes? Um, Puppy dog eyes? No. Like locked jaw eyes? Yeah, nah, not uh, really. Uh, it's disappointing. Well, he's not that good an actor. Then, no, is he? not at all. Uh, but man, I am so pumped to have Agents of Shield coming back. That last season was so amazing. Um, now that they're out in space and we got the Kree happening around again, I wonder if we're going to see Phil Coulson go a little bit crazy. Maybe. You know, after going to Tahiti. Yeah, yeah. You reckon we'll get some references back to that? Because that's the one thing I didn't like about that character's arc. Yeah, I don't think we'll go back there. I, I, I don't think, think they're we well and truly to. done with that. Uh, maybe though, who knows? Um, I'm just, I'm really curious to see how they do this, but I think they're really going to play off the Guardians of the Galaxy slash Thor Ragnarokish type of vibe yeah. uh, that we've been getting. And we know that a lot of these movies are going to be heading to space, yeah, with Infinity War and Captain Marvel and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So. Well, I'm wondering if this is like a, a primer for that. Yeah, maybe it'll be good. Well, remember, Agents of Shield is still the in show. the MCU. Yeah, it's still like that one show that is like still technically tied to the rest. But like they're kind of just, it's almost like they're, you know, like, what's the word? It's like they're kind of slowly trying to wean us off the fact that it's with the MCU. Yeah. The references get less and less and less. And then all of a sudden they'll just stop talking about it. And we just, you know, kind of like the sometimes that we do with this show where we just stop doing things. Or like we just gradually phase them out and just hope no one actually notices that we've changed the show completely. Yeah. Wink. <laughs> uh, but I'm also very excited for this. Uh, I, I do want to say this: Stan people, Netflix people, uh, someone pick this up. Pick this up. Uh, Foxtel, one of your channels. You've got 138 of them. I think Channel Seven in Australia has the rights to this. They do, and they they don't play it consistently. They play it about a month behind, what, or something like that. And they've got some ridiculous time slot, 11:30 like, yeah, or some 10 shit, 10:30 or 11:30 at night, and it's like. It, it, it's it's completely inconsistent. Can someone at Seven Australia and at Comic Con Pod put us in this conversation? We want to sort this out at Seven at Comic Con Pod, and we're gonna we're gonna start to make this. It's gonna be our mission to get Agents of Shield to Australian TVs in a regular time. We're gonna try to do that. Yeah, we'll give it a go. We'll probably get nowhere, but we'll keep you updated. Now, Fox has released the first official teaser trailer for Deadpool Two, and it's either not what you'd expect or exactly what you'd expect from the creative marketing team behind the live-action Merc with a Mouth. Uh, it is scheduled for release on the thirty-first of May, twenty eighteen. What is your take <laughs> on this? It is a bit uh, not so. Not for me. Not for you? Aggressively not for me, this trailer. Really? But the, uh, I mean, like, the humor's great, but it's still, like, 
still very much like dick humor. Like, I mean, one of his paint palettes is a fucking penis. For God's sake, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, just gonna just whack this off a little bit. I mean, it's funny, <laughs> it's funny, but I mean, I'm sure we can get better humor out of Deadpool than that. No, you don't there, reckon? There is no, like, there is no age in. I'm gonna say anyone's life, but it's definitely in a man's life. Yeah, uh, where dick jokes aren't funny anymore, and there's dick jokes, there's fart jokes, dick and fart jokes together. Uh, I don't know how you make that work, but though that type of like you know ridiculous toilet humor is still funny, and this is kind of what you know we would expect from that. It's going to get obviously a lot better, um, but this is you know these the, you've got the the drug references and the profanity and the, the the dick jokes and the wanking and like all that sort of stuff. It's great. What I, what I love about it is like it's so ludicrous that he's wearing an outfit over his outfit. Yeah. Like it's just like silly little touches like that that like I give that's funnier than like making the dick humor. Do you like understand the reference that is referencing the? I can't remember what the show was called, but with the artist. Podcast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah, cool. Because um, that's funny in itself. Yes, exactly. Um, especially like really weirdly that um like it's just this guy seems to be popping up a fair bit. Uh, even though I think he passed away last year, it might have been the year before that, perhaps. Um, GQ magazine just made um, Colin Kaepernick uh, GQ man of the year, right? So he's a um, football player. It doesn't matter. There's like political stuff involved, all that sort of crap. We've had our one for the year. I won't go into it. Uh, but he does have he does have like an afro. Oh, right. Uh, a okay. fairly sort of um, a recognizable afro. Yeah. And um, somebody, I can't remember who it was, some meme maker on the internet, I don't know. They changed it from Colin Kaepernick to Bob Ross. Amazing. So this guy's just popping up everywhere. Deadpool's doing it too. Don't get a lot of actual footage. It's really probably maybe 20 seconds tops, kind of really just oh, into cut within itself. Five, that, five seconds, 10 seconds, max. Maybe 10 seconds. I'll but give uh, you 10 seconds. One thing I noticed is that um, Teenage Warhead seems to have graduated. Yeah. Yeah, she's got her like full on outfit. Yeah. Uh, looks like classic outfit though. Yeah. Which I like. I like that. Um, yeah, you kind of don't, you don't really get to see too much of, uh, well, you really don't get to see much of um, Domino. You don't really get to see anything of Cable other than a bit of a I'll hand, a, it to hand him. job, I was going to say. Wow. Whatever. My, see, this is, <laughs> this is the difference between you and I. What? You go for the hand job and I go, well, you know, it's a little hand joke. Like, yeah. But mine, mine's like, you know, funny. We discussed this. Dick jokes work. Wow. And we're going to leave them in uh, as much as we possibly can. Uh, I liked it. I thought it was fun. It's what you'd expect. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more. Apparently, this is the trailer in the States that played before Justice League. Oh, really? And the reaction to it has been amazing. So Awesome. Um, yeah. What did we get? We got Star Wars and fucking Daddy's Home 2 or something. Yeah, <laughs> we, we did. Oh, and, and we got um, Black Panther. Oh, yeah, but the first Black Panther yeah. trailer, like the one that came out, Australia, stop being so goddamn behind, please. I love you, though. Uh, now, the big one. Oh, this is <laughs> this is the trailer of the week. The trailer of the week. Uh, Warner Brothers Pictures have released the first trailer for Rampage, the Brad Payton-directed adaptation of the classic 80s arcade game and starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Joe Manginello, and a whole bunch of... Of giant ass animals. Rampage is set for release April 20, 2018. Uh, what do you think? It's the director of San Andreas teaming up with the star of San Andreas. Um, it looks exactly like San Andreas, but with a couple of animals in there. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was a sequel to that movie. Oh, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> like the first time I saw this, I was like, oh, wait, he's like flying that helicopter like he did in that other movie. Yeah. And it's like, do you think the joke he made in this was reference to that? Maybe. Like, surely. Like, the whole, it's coming back to me. Sort yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah. From that one time that I saved the entire, like, east coast of America. Didn't he only save his family and let everyone else die? That's a good point. <laughs> the Rock didn't really do much. Maybe he did. I don't know. He I saw, saw a movie. helicopter that could have saved thousands of lives and went to save his family. I saw that movie once. Uh, I can't remember. I'm also getting it confused with Independence Day 2, uh, where uh, Will Smith's wife falls off the building. <laughs> When you know, you know it goes I mean? from stripper to doctor, <laughs> stripper to in doctor, five short years, and then dies. Um, what a life! <laughs> what a life! Amazing. Um, yeah, look, this is um, it's got a good cast. I mean, you know, there's, there's the Rock. Like we've been. Very Who else critical. is in this but the Rock? Jeffrey Dean Morgan. 
Okay. Uh, and Joe Manginello. Yeah. How long do you think he's going to last? Uh, he will be the leader of the group of people that dies. Yeah. Like the mercenaries. He'll probably be the last one. He'll be the main antagonist bad dude. You reckon? Or you reckon it's Jeffrey Dean Morgan? Oh, this is... I reckon Jeffrey Dean Morgan will die pretty pretty early. Yeah, I reckon his thing is more like a cameo yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's like almost just playing Negan. Yeah. By the looks of it. He's uh, almost like, you know, we're going to PP Pants City, bitches. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised he actually didn't say that line. I hope, you're putting, I hope you put your shitting pants on. Yeah. Because you're going to shit your pants. One of the worst lines of the season, my friend. Uh, pretty sure he didn't say that last bit. I just no, he did. Did he? That's legitimately what he said. To I thought. The, to I, the I thought. Priest. He, I thought he said. I hope you got your shitting pants on. Yeah, because you're going it. to shit your pants. Uh, <laughs> did he say that? I'll be disappointed. Internet, let us know. Is that what he said? But I'm telling you, that's what he said. Uh, Rampage. Look, it's uh, Dwayne the, Dwayne the Rock Johnson versus uh, a couple of big animals. There's, there's a monkey. There's a wolf. There's. I don't a, know like why the crocodile, the, the crocodile like, you know, looked like it's from the pre prehistoric times. You know. Yeah, well, we've discussed this. Crocodiles are from prehistoric times. Yeah, that one, <laughs> but that one's like old as fuck looking. Yeah, that one dead set looked like an actual dinosaur looking thing. Um, are you Even though they're it? technically dinosaurs, you know? Oh, we yeah, whatever. It. Whatever, we get it. Okay. Are you pumped for it, though? Uh, no. Not me either. Not in the slightest bit. Look, we're going to. I asked people to give us, for the listener question section, I asked people to give us. Um, the rock questions i wanted questions specifically for the rock i wanted to celebrate the man instead of like you know uh, giving him a whole bunch of shit like we seem to do every week actually you know what we're gonna get we're getting some tickets from sony in the future for the jumanji movie yeah and we're gonna do a little bit of a giveaway i don't yeah. even know if i've told you about this yet no uh but yeah they're gonna send us some tickets um actually they might be in my mailbox right now but we should do like a rock competition yeah and like whoever wins that can get some tickets to go see Jumanji. Like a rock off. Yeah. Yeah. I want a rock. We'll, fi- we'll, 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 we'll workshop it. We'll, we'll workshop we'll figure that. it out. But one of the questions that popped up a couple of times, um, and uh, the one that I'm looking at in particular in front of me is from Kirsten. Uh, she is one of the hosts of the fabulous Potterheads. It's a Harry Potter show. You, you understand. The, Just the whatever you do, do not take TV show recommendations of this girl. No, do not do that. Uh, however, her question was, uh, is there just too much Dwayne Johnson? And I don't think she means physically. Uh, I think she means just in general. Will we get fatigue? Uh, the answer is a yes from me, which is her, not me. Me, Kirsten. Wow, can you make that more clearer? Because that wasn't... Um, I, 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 feel totally like the, I feel like the people get it. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you get rock fatigue? Uh, Have you got it? Uh, is it a thing? We've spoken about this a little bit before. Uh, you know what? No. Yeah, I kind of so. like it. I kind of like it. It's like one of those things where he's almost becoming a parody of himself. Yeah, that's true. And I want it to just keep going and going and going. You know how Terry Crews is? Yeah. The, I feel like The Rock is on that path. But a much higher level. Yeah. Yeah. Like he just gets paid 10 times more. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think you can, and I think it's almost getting to a point where it's happening. Uh, to the point, like, you know, uh, you, like there is so much rock out there. Um, you can't look left, right, or center without looking at a movie poster of The Rock in an upcoming movie, whether it's this or Jumanji or what else is happening. There's potentially Black Adam still being spoken about. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that's happening. This guy's had, like, I think he's going to, by the end of the year, he'll have had three movies released. Uh, under his own, you know, by himself. That's insane. Three movies. That is a lot. That's a lot of rock. Uh, that's a lot of rock. So I am suffering from rock fatigue. Uh, it's about time we got some more paper and scissors up in this exactly. bitch. Exactly. Now one more. Oh, we have one more. Now I was going to leave. Almost, it. almost hit stop on the little recorder there. I was going to leave it, but you know we've got some uh, we've got some Harry Potter fans out there, so you know we're going to throw this one out there. It's okay. only going to be a little quick one. Oh, are uh, we doing the listener questions here? No, 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 no. This is just this is the last news story. I oh. just threw that one in there because it was related. Now Warner Brothers has unveiled the first photo and title for the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them sequel, set for release on the sixteenth of November, twenty eighteen. The sequel will be officially titled Fantastic Beasts: The Crimes of Grindelwald, and the cast. Last photo reveals our first look at Johnny Depp's Grindelwald and Jude Law's young Albus Dumbledore. Did you see this picture? No. Well, there you go. Explain it to me. Oh, look, it's Paint just... Paint me a picture. Well, it's literally just a cast photo. Uh, but in Oh, the... if this is a photo, then I have seen that. Yeah, but in the magic of Harry Potter, 
the photo comes to life <gasps> and the characters move and it's some a smoke gif. moves. Yeah, no, it's not a gif. <laughs> it's like one of those Harry it's Potter gif. photos. It's a gif, mate. You know the Harry Potter photos from <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, the the people out there know know what I mean. Uh yeah, and so in it you get like the the returning cast members and a whole bunch of new ones as well, including Jude Law as young Elvis Dumbledore. And our first look at Johnny Depp as a Gellert Grindelwald in this particular movie, because we did maybe see him. I don't know. I can't say. That's a spoiler. Um, now, there's been a little bit of backlash. Oh, yeah. Because people are genuinely upset that this has the potential to revive Johnny Depp's career. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Stop, stop this movie. Yeah. 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 Just, just put him in one more Pirates movie and let him like <laughs> just go down with the ship. No, nobody really wants that. Everybody wants this sequel. The first movie was pretty good. I enjoyed it for sure. Yeah, it's fun. Um, I thought it was good. Uh, looking forward to the sequel. We'll definitely go out and watch it when it comes out and we'll probably talk about it, all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, so I don't know, man. It's just, it looks like Johnny Depp on meth, which is probably just Johnny Depp Yeah, in normal life. I think so. Yeah, but I think he's just got peroxide blonde hair. Mm. Uh, so that's which is also Johnny this Depp in edgy. real life. This is edgy Johnny Depp. We haven't seen edgy. This is nineteen nineties Johnny Depp, but as a fifty five year old man. Yeah, this is like our Blink one eighty two Johnny Depp. <laughs> and more importantly than that, we also get to see Jude Law's young Albus Dumbledore uh, with a much larger receding hairline as a young man than he did have. Uh, as a fully grown, a uh, hundred and whatever year old magic man, magic man, magic. Yeah, look, that's fair. He magicked his f- forehead <laughs> line forward. Couldn't we all use that? Oh yeah. <laughs> this week we decided to go all in a little earlier than we normally would to bring you our review of Zack Snyder's and Joss Whedon's. Did you say we were all in prematurely? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't look at my phrasing there. Uh, so the epic new and long-awaited entry into DC Films Universe, Justice League, naturally. A movie that already has critics immensely divided, but we're here to cut through the crap and talk about what the movie got right, what it got wrong, and most importantly, should you go and see it and spend your hard-earned money on it? Uh, naturally, because we're the nice guys we are, and because not all heroes wear capes, we're going to do non-spoilers. Like I said at the top of the show, first. Now, hit us with a movie synopsis, Cade. Troy, let me tell you what this movie is about. For the three people in the world that don't know. Wow. That's disappointing, isn't it? Fueled by his restored faith in humanity and inspired by Superman's selfless act, Bruce Wayne enlists the help of his newfound ally, Diana Prince, to face an even greater enemy. What's that? Greater than who? Uh, An even greater enemy than um, Doomsday, you would assume. You would assume. But they don't actually say that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like, that's very misleading. Like, I would say that, like, maybe that leads me to think that Diana Prince is the enemy. Or that she was an enemy. Or Superman was the enemy and he's now teaming up with Diana Prince yeah. to face an even greater enemy than Superman. Yeah, exactly. Blame IMDb. That's really it's bad. It's actually the Warner Brothers official synopsis on the IMDb page. So don't blame me. Not good. Now, Not financials, good. we don't have anything. Uh, this is on track for about a $110 million opening weekend domestically in the States. A little that's, bit low. That's a bit low for what this movie really is. Um, it's still on track for about uh, 330 to $350 million worldwide first week which is uh less it's less than thor ragnarok let's just throw it out there we're not comparing the two uh but it is less than thor ragnarok both uh opening weekend and um the total week but that is early tracking uh we'll see reviews haven't been as kind as they were to um thor ragnarok obviously so that could play a factor later on down the track it's a bit sad if it does really well, it does, though. That's the thing. I now, know. Look, we're, we may as well get this out of the way because Rotten Tomatoes have released their score. Oh, I don't know this yet. Oh, don't you? So they have uh, they have released it and they did hold back. And the reason why they held back on releasing their score is because they have a new podcast similar to this one, but probably not as good. Um, now, it in that, they wanted to save the reveal for that show. Okay. So they actually pushed it back later than they normally would. Uh, and they, it got leaked, but then they finally revealed it as 43% rotten. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, apparently Rotten Tomatoes has come under a bit of um, flack. Now, as they do, because like they're pretty shit. Yeah. But <laughs> they've come under a bit of flack because apparently their scoring system or their review system, it can actually 
like it can reviewers can be uploaded anonymously from other sources so like so oh. i could i could upload your review yeah. technically without your permission and if it doesn't have a decidedly positive or negative slant it goes into the negative pile really yeah wow <laughs> so apparently there've been there've been a couple of critics who have come out and said hey i didn't actually authorize for my review to be on there um, and because it was kind of like a mixed review, it automatically contributed or helped contribute to that 43% rotten. Wow. Now, that's uh, controversial. Very controversial, especially considering the editor of um, a Rotten Tomatoes is apparently a known DCU films hater. Oh. Now, but look, I don't want to get involved in all that sort of stuff because I really don't care. Rotten Tomatoes is, you know... it. It's fuck a critic. It, it's fuck a critic, but it's it's, you know... It's nothing at best. I mean, you know, these things you should really take the time to go and see them yourself. Whether it's shit or whether it's good, at least, you know, go out, see it yourself, make, make your, own, your decision. own decision on that. Um, you should never trust in the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, yeah, uh, like I can't really say anything more than that. Like yeah. just don't trust in the reviews. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Now. Let's talk about the cast. Let's get into this movie. Oh, wait. We missed one thing, and that was the budget. Now, this is have a kind of has a reported budget between 200 to $300 million. Yeah. That might be one of the biggest blockbuster budgets in a long time. Well, see, here's the thing, though, because this is all based on hearsay as well. Exactly. So, some people are saying that the reshoots doubled the production budget, um, which is insane. Because you're you're basically saying that let's say your production budget was 150 million dollars, you've now doubled it to 300 million yeah. because of the reshoots. Uh, other reports have come out to say that the reshoots cost the company about 25 to 30 million, which is like, about normal, which is probably about normal. So um, this is a you know like I would say that this would look anywhere between 150 to 200. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, but what do I know? Who's right. in this movie, Troy? Ben Affleck. Yeah. Who's he play? Uh, he plays Batman. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bruce Wayne. That too. Uh, yeah, we've got Gal Gadot, which is uh, Diana Prince, Wonder Woman, Henry Cavill, uh, Clark Kent, Superman, in what capacity? Who knows? Could be flashbacks, flash forwards, could be present day. We're not giving you spoilers yet. Uh, Jason Momoa, Arthur Curry, Aquaman, Ezra Miller, Barry Allen, and The Flash. Not and The Flash, just the same. And Ray Fisher is Victor Stone slash Cyborg. Now, Troy, there was a couple of extra people in this movie. Who were they? J.K. Simmons, Amy Adams, Amber Heard, Con- Connie Nielsen, a whole mess of others. Diane Lane was there. There were a whole bunch of people. Kevin Costner was in a photo. Uh, <laughs> was he really? <laughs> yeah, I think. I think. Amazing. Um, yeah. Interesting to note that this had credited to Zack Snyder for direction. Yeah. Uh, that was always going to happen. I, I, I was wondering if they were going to do a co-director. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good that it's it's still written and directed by Zack Snyder. So the screenplay was written by uh, Joss Whedon and uh, Chris Terrio, I think, or maybe Joss Whedon and another dude. Yeah. And Zack Snyder and Chris Terrio actually wrote the movie, whatever. Okay. Uh, with cinematography by Fabian Wagner, uh, who actually um, was, if you don't know that, here's a little bit of trivia for you, has done some of the best episodes of Game of Thrones to ever hit our screens. Oh, yeah. I totally did including not, not know that. Hard Home, Battle of the Bastards, etc., etc., etc. Watch your mouth, mate. Now, we're going to kick it off with spoiler three. three if I do that every week. Spoiler three thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> spoiler three thoughts. Cade, uh, give us an overview. You know what? After like going into Thor Ragnarok with my expectations set really high because... Um, if you go back to earlier podcasts from this year, I kind of said it was either going to be Thor Ragnarok or Justice League that was going to be the movie of the year. And I went into Thor Ragnarok with my expectations set to 12 out of 10. Yep. And it shook me. Oh, shook. Yeah. I came into this one with no expectations and I was okay with it. <laughs> Just okay. Yeah, yeah. Like the movie, it was, it was pretty fun. Uh, the story went along very quickly. Yeah. And that's just one of the concerns that I kind of had with this movie because it was reported that it actually had a three and a half hour to nearly four hour original shoot that yep. was brought down, including including the credits, to just under two hours. Yeah. 
And you can actually feel it in this movie because it kind of goes very, very quickly. It's like one of the problems I had actually with Thor Ragnarok at the start was how quick it kind of traveled in the first act. Yep. Uh, this movie kind of suffered that all the way through in some... Well, actually, probably all the way through. Okay. Um, and that's just my opinion. It's not a... It, it didn't make the movie any less more enjoyable. Yep. But there was definitely moments where I felt like things were missing. There was big space jumps. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't really have a problem with the pacing myself. Yep. Um, I think I was asked on Twitter to give a uh, like a one-line review. Um, by uh, one of our good friends on Twitter, PS True Gamer. Oh yeah, um, is it True Gamer? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's one of our good friends. Why do I know that? Anyway, look, it's just off the top of my head. But um, a one line review, and my one line review was flawed but fabulous. Oh, so, that's really good. Yeah. So I still had a really good time with yep. this movie, um, and I think like it's a lot of fun. And I don't want to play off like the the same like early Twitter reactions and all that sort of stuff. But it was it was it was really fun. You can go in and you 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 get a lot out of these new characters. Um, you know, you you do have to say Ezra Miller is a standout. Jason Momoa is a standout. Yeah. Um, look, Ray Fisher is a as cyborg. I'll tell you this: the CGI for Cyborg was not as bad as you think it's going to be at all. There, no, there was not an issue with it at all. You know what? I had more trouble with Aquaman CGI than I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there's probably one of the things that we did speak about about this movie is there are a couple of scenes that um, are obvious reshoots and they do come probably fairly early within the movie. Definitely. And they are, they're they very obvious to the point that it takes you out of the movie a little bit Yeah. Um, because they're also intercut with scenes that are obviously shot on location. Um, so we're talking like green screen type of stuff. So very obvious green screen when they're also shooting other things directly there on location. So obviously reshoots. Um, so there are a couple of those things that really stand out. Um, my my issue though with, with Cyborg is I don't think anybody's going to be clamoring for a solo Cyborg movie anytime soon. No, and in saying that, I kind of gathered the, I guess, the, the, produ- the producers of this movie understood that too because we kind of see... Um, a friendship building between The Flash and Cyborg yeah. throughout this movie. Yeah. And it was always kind of reported on that we we're going to get the the team-up movie between The Flash and Cyborg yeah. months and months ago. And I can kind of see they're kind of laying the groundwork for that. Yeah. And I wouldn't say no to that. Yeah. I would still love a Flash solo movie that will do the Flashpoint storyline. Yeah, for sure. But as, I guess, a second place, I wouldn't mind a Cyborg-Flash team-up. Yeah. Because it's kind of they kind of almost seem like buddy cops. Yeah, a little bit, sort of more like you do. You do see kind of um, cyborg, uh, kind of gain his humanity as it goes because he starts off quite sort of um, not like he's like jarred from the world. Yeah, because exactly. he's, he's this thing now, this this monster kind of thing, and you do see him kind of uh, progress through, and he, he, his 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 kind of like his. Uh, I guess emotional arc is probably one of the better ones of the of the lot. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I just don't think people are going to be clamoring to see a, a solo cyborg movie anytime soon. Gal Gadot, wonderful as always. Um, Jason Momoa will stand out, as I said, and Ben Affleck. I mean, Ben Affleck is Ben Affleck, isn't he? I mean, he makes an can absolute... Can do no wrong. He can do no wrong. Makes an absolutely fantastic Bruce Wayne. And you probably see a lot more Bruce Wayne in this movie than you do Batman. Definitely. Um, but uh, as a Batman, he is still absolutely kick-ass. Now, a couple of questions I want to ask just in relation to like this movie because we can talk about these things without talking about spoilers. Okay. Um, what do you think about the two directors? Do you think it was an issue? Uh, I I noticed it. Yeah. Because there were some scenes where you, you just you hit it home, you know, that's Zack Snyder. Yeah. And then I remember there was one scene of Batman that was Joss Whedon written all over it. Yeah. And I was just like, that is so like tonally different for the character yep. and the movie that it's instantly recognizable that someone else's input there. Yeah. What about yourself on that? The same. Yeah. Uh, like I think it, it, uh, the movie suffered a little bit because of it. And when I say suffered, I don't mean in any sense of the word that to me, this was a bad movie. That's not what I'm getting yeah. at, but it did suffer a little bit because it felt a little bit disjointed between the two different styles. Yes. Because it was at times very glaring where it was definitely, like you said, definitely Zack Snyder. And then all of a sudden you've got this kind of like 
jokey thing happening that that is so obviously more kind of in the mold of Joss Whedon that it kind of yeah it, it takes you out of it a little Definitely. bit because you're like what just happened yeah it's almost like a cut scene sort of thing where it yeah. just cuts to another completely different scene um, now that's not a fault of either of the directors at all this comes down to editing again definitely and you know it is it's one of those things it's it's always going to be tough when you're dealing with one director who's done so much of the movie and then you've got another one who comes in and, and finishes it off and we're going to see the same thing possibly with solo um, you've got two very distinct kind of things uh, and it did show unfortunately for the movie Definitely. Um, let's talk about the characters and what we can in the, I guess, the non-spoilers. Uh, I guess the main one that I really want to talk about is the Flash. Okay. Um, I the Flash is my favorite character of all time. Yep. Out of any comic series, out of any TV series, out of any movie, um, I thought they did a really great job of him. And what I like is it seems like we've got a very young Flash. Yeah, and that's important to remember. Like this is not. The Barry Allen who has been the Flash for a little while. Exactly. This, this is, is like Barry Allen's been the Flash for three months. months. Yeah. Dead set months. Like, you know, he's kind of gotten to the point where he's got himself a suit. Yeah. And and that's kind of where it's at. You know what I mean? Like he, he hasn't really even established how to run fast without falling over properly. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And that, that I think is really good because he is the youngest member of the team, youngest member of the cast. And they played that really well um, because, yeah, you, like... You might go in there wanting to see the comic book Flash that you know or you know anything like that, but you're not going to see that. It's going to be a little bit different, but you have to understand that it's the younger version of this character uh, and it's pretty amazing. Yeah, definitely. And I think he was the best character in this movie. Okay. Yeah, and I say that as in a scene stealer, as in um, good growth in him, yep. um, development, everything. Yeah, I'm going to call it for a Wonder Woman Oh really? Uh, yeah, again, that's, that's really interesting. Some of her, some of her action sequences, yeah, were brilliant. How am I? Oh well, we can't really talk about it just yet. Let's talk about that in spoilers. Yeah, but there, there is. I, I will go on record as saying this, right? In so far as this movie, there are a couple of scenes in this movie, including end credit scenes, and there's a scene towards the middle and stuff like that, which I'm not going to go into. There are a couple of scenes in this movie that are dead set worth the price of admission themselves yes um so even if you're hesitating going to see it like there are some things in this thing like you'll understand when when you see it like it is it's not a perfect movie but there are some things that are probably some of the coolest shit i've seen in a long time and it's kind of like like there were some audible holy fuck moments <laughs> like genuine, by you and i yeah by you and i in this movie um, because there was there was some uh, genuinely cool shit, which we'll talk about more in spoilers. Uh, but just so you know, for you guys listening for the spoiler free, uh, there are some things in this movie that will make you shit your pants. Have your shitting pants on, but good ways. Yeah, good ways. Um, Troy, do you want to head towards spoilers in a minute? Well, let's just let's just before we do that, let's talk about the villain first ah, because yeah. I have a question for this. Okay, shoot now me. this is a villain that has been already heavily criticized and i mean heavily uh there are people out there that are claiming this is the worst comic book villain that they've seen so far um in so far as his look his plan his motivations all that sort of stuff what do you think about that statement um i i would say it's almost fair but I feel like this villain is different to all the other villains yep. because he wasn't coming here really to destroy anyone or destroy the earth. He was here for one reason and one reason only. Uh, he, he wasn't here to fight the Justice League. Yeah. He wasn't here to destroy humanity. Yep. He was here to essentially get his mother boxes. Yeah. And he's got to get his goddamn mother he's boxes. He's got to get his mother boxes. And... What was interesting... Oh, can't really talk about it yet. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I could see why people are very unimpressed with him as a villain. Yeah. But they also kind of have to realize that he's a different type of villain. Yeah. I would say that his overall purpose isn't overly clear. Yeah. Um, you know, at some point. Like, I know, yes, that the, the kind of goal of him is to gather the mother boxes. But it doesn't really cover why. why. Yeah, like, it's not... It, they don't say it's or, to destroy humanity. Yeah, or if it does, it's very quickly glazed over. Exactly. Um, and, you know, also very conveniently, like, 
you know, located <laughs> in a very, very isolated part of the world. Definitely. So they can have this, you know, this big final battle without mass human collateral damage, which was heavily criticized in earlier movies. However, I do think the reasoning behind that was quite clever because they kind of gave it a scientific yeah. reason to why they chose said spot. Yeah. So I'm going to let that half slide, yeah. but it's still a little bit too movie land convenience yeah. for me. Overall, I think it was. I think it was okay. I think as a villain, it was passable. Uh, nothing fantastic. Um, the CGI was troublesome for me most times. For him, um, yes. You know, if we're talking about this movie, are there issues with CGI? Little tiny bits here and there, but for the most part, for me, the biggest the biggest problem was was Steppenwolf. He kind of looked like he was a video game character in a real life movie. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. Um, there was no like. You know, we tried to speak like we tried to talk about it after we watched the movie and tried to put our finger on what the issue was, because like you know, whether it's just not polished CGI or like the the mouth movements weren't captured properly in you know in conjunction with the the speaking, there was something about it that just wasn't you know it didn't look like a human face at all, and yeah. I know it's not supposed to in the sense of like what he is and where he's from and all that sort of stuff, but. Uh, Kieran Hines actually I, I did some research and he did do the motion capture for this oh he did so we weren't sure if he did but he actually did the motion capture but there was nothing of his face there so obviously you know do you know what I mean absolutely so look don't go in there thinking that there's going to be issues with the CGI but for for me uh, Steppenwolf was a bit of an issue now let's just get into the overall do you rate this movie for the people that haven't seen it yet and uh, need to go out and see it yeah, rate it. Go out there, see it. It's a fun time. Just don't have super high expectations. I would love to see, and I know this is like now a DC curse. I want to see the extended edition. I want to see everything that we missed. Yeah, uh, it would be interesting to see. I think there are, yeah, it like, like I said, flawed but fabulous. Yeah. I, like I had a really, really good time in this movie. Went for two hours. That's not a long movie, like in the grand scheme of things. Um, but two hours went by very quickly. Yeah, I didn't feel there were like pacing problems necessarily. Maybe a little bit too rushed. But um, look, John Campier, not a big fan. <laughs> I've gone on the record <laughs> of saying it multiple, multiple times. But he did say one thing uh, that I did agree with, and that's for people criticizing the runtime and saying it's too short. Any further, like any any longer a runtime on this movie would have taken you away from the things that are actually fun and probably had you concentrate on the flaws a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, and he actually makes a really good point. So the, the shorter the shorter um, time frame allowed you to kind of gloss over on some of the flaws that this movie Kind of keeps the adrenaline high yeah. and you ride on that all the way through. Because the action is fucking fun as shit. Yeah. The parademons look amazing. Uh, yeah. So there, there is a lot of really good things about this. Uh, I 100% rate it as well. Go out and see it. Don't trust Rotten Tomatoes. They're a bunch of douchebags. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't we know don't know that personally. Know that. Now let's get into some spoiler thoughts. Spoilers. Holy moly. Now, when you walk into this movie, you would have just been bitterly disappointed by the absolute terrible CGI on let's talk Superman's about Superman's face. <laughs> let's talk about Mustache Gate. Yeah. Because Mustache Gate is real. Can we call it Tash Gate? Tash Gate. Yeah, it's just a bit better. Stash Gate. Stash Gate. Yeah, okay. I like that. Stashgate 2017. Dun, dun. Uh, it was bad. It was real bad. <laughs> um, I'm surprised that they had to reshoot so many scenes of Superman with a moustache. Uh, and this is the thing. Like, this is like his reshoots were apparently very, very quick. But when you're kind of like, when you're instantly taken out of the movie because of the terrible CGI work, and I am legitimately like using that word right, terrible. Yes. Um, it is he is in the opening scene this is what we open on and we open on we literally this is how they enter you like your entry into the movie is wondering where his actual mouth is yeah that whoever authorized that really needs to be sat down to and maybe given a written warning or something because i mean yeah okay it might be there to kind of humanize the character and kind of show you know what he wasn't like this dark brooding character yeah. he's actually really nice he's talking about kids hey with a podcast yeah um but man that was some dog shit cgi yeah um and it, it popped up a couple of times yeah and it was very distracting um now that's probably it 
for for the real bad CGI. Yeah. There's Stashgate. Uh, there's Steppenwolf. And there's a couple of green screeny bits in some, um, you know, some conversations between um, Aquaman and Batman yeah. or Bruce Wayne, uh, sort of when he goes to Iceland to find him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You will notice them when you see them. Uh, once they're done, that's kind of it. Like it actually looks really good. Like it's a, it's a beautifully shot movie, in my opinion. Absolutely. And I'll agree 100%. Um, one thing that I notice when watching this movie is one of these things that I do is when I see a trailer or multiple trailers, I kind of like to try piece those bits into the movie. And um, it's almost safe to say that half what we saw in the trailers doesn't almost make it into these movies. Yeah, but there are a lot of, like, again, this suffers a little bit of Suicide Squad-ishness um, by some of the jokes that are in the movie, some yeah. of the, the one-liners, are the ones that you see in the trailers. So, yes, there's a lot of action that they leave out, and there are a lot of, like, fantastic sort of fight sequences and all that that you don't actually get to see. Uh, case in point, Wonder Woman's f- first one when she's in the, um, the the bank. Yes. Or whatever it is with the uh, with the armed guards or not, you know, with the armed It's people. not really clear what that place is because it's kind of like, why is there school children in here? Because kids don't want to go to a bank. Well, they might be dragged there by their parents. Uh, you don't know. Have I you think never been dragged to a bank by your parents? All those kids? By one parent? All those kids. They're on a school excursion to learn about the goddamn value of money because that's what we should be doing in 2017, not teaching them trigonometry. Politics. I just... <laughs> <laughs> We're getting very political. Um, yeah, but I get what you're saying. Like, yeah. what is it? Is it a library? Is it a... You know, what? In, in the end, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, but, man, how amazing was Wonder Woman in those scenes? That's what I mean. Like, you get glimpses of it in the trailers, but the full extended scene is actually, like, it's got some fucking brilliant things in there. I loved it, man. I'm like, yes, that's why I loved Gal Gadot in everything she does, because she is just so kick ass um and it was just it was good it was amazing I definitely it. that's my point oh man no one's gonna I don't, if anyone argues that that opening scene with wonder woman is anything but great they are unpleasable yeah now contrast that to the opening scene with batman and i was not impressed okay tell me why um it just didn't flow well like from what we've seen previously and what we saw later in that particular movie, that initial fight scene with the parademon seemed very like, I don't know. It just, it, it wasn't, it didn't flow well. It was kind of it like... It wasn't choreographed well or something. It was just kind of shoehorned in. Yeah, almost like shoehorned in. Uh, lots of wire tricks. Yes. It kind of, it just didn't seem to have the same feel as later fight scenes and what we've seen in Batman vs. Superman already. And that was a little bit disappointing because it's the first time you see him and you're like, holy fuck, we're in Gotham City and there's a bad guy on a rooftop and there's Batman just sitting over there in the corner like doing stuff, but yeah. you know, whatever. Well, you know what? I'm going to kind of disagree with you because okay. like when the, I guess that the bad guy comes up onto the building and you see Batman sitting across on the other building, that was yeah. like very, very cool. Yeah. In my opinion. And how he was kind of crawling around that water tower yeah. was good. Everything after that was shit. Yeah, it's just you, it was very hard to see what was happening yeah. when he was actually fighting the parademon. And it almost seemed like it was a setup to lure this parademon in. Well, it was, yeah. It, 100%. 100, was. It was, a, it was yeah. a setup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's like, because uh, the bad guy was like, what do you want from me? He's like, fear. He's like, they can smell it. And then all of a sudden you see the parademon rise up. But he kind of like lets him go. Yeah, because he doesn't care about that dude. That's not what he's there for. Yeah, he doesn't true. care about some like you know, little criminal. He's chasing a goddamn parody he's man. He's slipping, man. He's chasing an intergalactic bug-looking thing. Fair call. That's more important. Um, now, heavy spoilers. So if you are still with us, like why? <laughs> if you, like, why do you do this? Why, why do you do this to yourself? If you haven't seen the movie, it is time to leave. Because we're going to talk about the resurrection of Superman. Um, and subsequent action sequences uh which i thought were fucking outstanding i'm nodding i'm saying yes are you nodding in agreement no because i'm like an idiot no no i i 100 percent agree i mean this was almost my favorite scene in the movie where we got to see the flash go up in super speed against superman yeah and it was it was a brilliant little kind of like you know as he's speeding past thinking everything's going to be cool and then superman just starts like turning his head just watching him as he's going 
And Barry Allen kind of realizes, holy oh, shit. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> I'm fucked. But then still has a hand to hand fight with him and kind of holds his own. Doesn't yeah. fight back, but doesn't get hit by the Man of Steel, which is pretty damn good. Uh, we're going to talk about the mega headbutt. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> that shit. Uh, so, yeah. The. Any interaction between, like, when you're when you're getting Superman versus Wonder Woman, like that is dead set boner central um, because it's just you know she we know she can probably hold her own. She's probably holding back a little bit as well because I hundred percent knew she was holding back because she's kind of like don't make me do this. Yeah, um, and it's kind of like it, it was just so like. Seeing them on screen for the first time together, like the the Trinity in Batman vs Superman, was cool enough. Yeah, but seeing these two very briefly, but seeing these two go head to head was absolutely amazing. Um, this whole sequence was was fantastic. Um, now, how did it all start? You're wondering. You've seen it, so you know we don't need to go into the details of how Superman was resurrected and why he's fighting the Justice League. You've seen it. Just understand that it was amazing. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. Uh, and then obviously we get Batman getting the absolute crap beaten out of him. Yeah, and cool. this is and this is like the part of the movie that kind of took me out where I can kind of see the, the two distinct versions of directors here. Yeah, okay. Where uh, Superman's kind of lifted Batman up by the face and is like, I'm going to like just crush your head. Yeah. And lets him go. And Batman's just kind of like on the ground like, oh, shit. Yeah, well, it, it's kind of like it was very, like, very tense and very kind of like, you know, it was uh, whatever the word is. I don't want to use like dark because that's not the word, but it was very like this is Superman that is like he he literally yeah. says, "You wouldn't let me live, and you, you won't, won't let, let me, me die. die." You know, he's like, and then like, he's what like, a great line, yeah, and then, and then to have it finished with that. Well, then he turns to him and says you know, do you bleed? And says the same thing back to him that Batman said to him in Batman vs Superman. Absolutely terrifying knowing that that is a god against a human. Um, and yeah, and then it kind of finishes with a little bit of a like a one-liner that probably wasn't necessary. Kind of like takes you out of it a little yeah. bit in the sense of like, oh yeah, okay, cool. We're back to normal. Yeah. Um, but still, it's like, you know, yeah, I get what you're saying. Because the scene was very, like very, very kind of intense. And it's just like, Humor, yeah. All right, now let's talk about a little bit, a little bit of controversy. Okay. Uh, in my mind, now I do need to ask you this question: Do you think, and I don't know where it's coming from, do you think there was too much of a focus on Gal Gadot's backside? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I was in the movie, and weirdly too much. Yeah, it was weirdly too much. I felt like this was Josh Whedon. Yeah, look. We don't know, but, but we do but know. But we do know. Um, I was having a conversation with a, a listener of the show yep. um, earlier. I think it might have been last night, maybe earlier today. I can't quite remember. Um, and we we're kind of having this like little bit of a debate about it. And he kind of brought up that um, Zack Snyder is like not impervious to this. Yep. He, and his references were, you know, you think of 300, you think of Watchmen. Uh, but those movies were also very highly sexualized in moments. I mean, there's a man walking around who glows blue and his dick's out the whole time. Yeah, that's very sexual. It is very sexual. Well, it's not, but you know. Well, hey, there's nothing. <laughs> there's a dick. <laughs> there's I, get a dick. I get what you're but, saying. But um, Justice League isn't a, a sexual movie, you know, like there's romantic tension in it. Yeah. But there's not sexual tension. Yeah, and it, but it's kind of like, it's almost like, hey, don't forget we have this incredibly attractive woman but it's not enough that she's an amazing kick-ass warrior and she is potentially, you know, the leader of this group or, yeah. or should be the leader of this group and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And one of the most interesting characters of the lot also has her butt all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's completely unnecessary. And for, you know, like, you know, two red-blooded young males like ourselves, I use all those words with with bunny ears. Uh, it is, you know, for us to say that, like, it, it's true. It's it, it was too much. Definitely. And it was unnecessary. Uh, and I can't believe I'm saying there was too much Gal Gadot, but, but there was. Yeah. And considering all the hard work that, I guess, Wonder Woman did for empowering her. Exactly. I felt like that really brought it down a notch. And I don't know if this is, like, 
an actual thing or if I'm just like imagining this, but I swear her skirt was like an inch or two shorter too. I would not be surprised. Let's like let's be honest. There was literally a scene in this movie where the hangar is coming down in a plane and Bruce Wayne and the Flash are standing there and Gal Gadot's on the tarmac and it is basically the camera is trained on her butt shooting up yeah. with Bruce Wayne and um, Ezra Miller in the background. I'm using their real names and mixing up their things. It doesn't matter. But you know what I'm saying. Ben Affleck, Ezra Miller in the background, Gal Gadot's butt right in the foreground. And it's kind of like, that's unnecessary. Yeah. Be an over-the-shoulder shot. Like it doesn't, there's no reason why it has to be there other than the fact that you are trying to sexualize this character which doesn't need to happen at all. That's right. Um, so a little bit of controversy there, not stuff that I really appreciated or think was necessary for the movie. And there is a little bit more. There's the Amazonian controversy and all that sort of stuff. We're not going to go into that anymore. We're here to talk about, we're here to celebrate. We're here to talk about the cool things. Um, now the parademons worked really well for me. I thought they, like, like I said earlier, they looked great. Uh, there were hundreds of them. It was amazing. The fight scenes between the League and the parademons were, were exceptional. Um, the fight scenes between the League and Steppenwolf, not as good, um, but, yeah. but still good. Like I will give it for for what they did with a like a ten foot tall CGI character. It still looked really good. I just it's Steppenwolf's face, man. It just you know didn't do it for me. The thing about Steppenwolf is that he's like he's this in between. I mean, we've got the Justice League, we've got Steppenwolf, and then we've got Superman. Yeah, and I feel like the distance between those all three is too great. Yeah, um, for it to be like, I guess, a realistic fight. Yeah, because Wonder Woman is this immensely powerful Amazonian that yeah. has defeated Steppenwolf before. Yeah, fair call that there was an army, but she is also a god killer now. Yeah, um, and it almost seemed like she had trouble keeping up with this guy, which. She can keep up with Superman. Yeah. When Superman came into the battle, Steppenwolf was almost like a, a rag doll. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was very much a... Um, this, like, I, I loved when it happened, but I think it happened very quickly. Like, there was no build-up to it in yeah. the sense of, um, oh, you know, Superman... It's basically like Jason Momoa said at one point, uh, Superman is like, he, he's, he's a no-show. And then they're fighting and things are happening and all of a sudden, and then Superman comes. There's no reference to it. There's no nothing. There's no like, you know. No like, call to action for it to happen. Yeah, anything that you see other than the fact, like in a f few scenes earlier, uh, Lois Lane says, um, you know, I'm kind of sad that you're back because now I have to let you go again. And that was it. And that was kind of your precursor to, yeah, you're going to go and join the fight. But he just pops up. It's like instantly and he's yeah. there. And then he just... Like, as we said last night, it's kind of like bang, 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 bang. You're done. Yeah. And that was it. How would you have, like, done this scene? Because I'll tell you how I would have done it. Okay, well, you tell me. I would have had, you know, Batman, he's getting defeated by Parademons because why? He's a man and these things are jacked AF. He's no normal man, but yes. Um, I would have had uh, Aquaman kind of be almost defeated by Steppenwolf. He's tried and broken this way here. Well, his whatever we'll call pitchfork. it. Pitchfork. His pitchfork. And then he gets his trident later on. Yeah. Um, I would have him kind of defeated, not incapacitated, but I'll have it so um, Wonder Woman is kind of like down on the ground, maybe getting beat into a pulp or something. Yeah. And the Flash is just, you know, doing what he does, running around trying to save whatever he can. Yeah. And it would have been great to see like the Flash recognize Superman coming in like super super speed yeah that only he could see him coming through the speed force or something like that yeah uh, rather than him actually showing it, like it would have been like a good grand entrance for him to come and save wonder woman yeah or save someone someone rather like, than just like like i'm here yeah i think he like i think he did save maybe cyborg or something like that in the sense of that was happening but there was no like look to the sky there was no like like real sort of grand entrance. It was yeah. just bam, I'm here. But yeah, exactly what you said would be great. Like someone like the flash being sort of in the background or whatever, doing his thing and actually seeing him arrive and actually just having some sort of like, you know, acknowledgement to the fact that he is on his way to help save the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rather than it's like, Oh, he's here now. Um, I do like the fact that they made him so overpowered. <laughs> 
I do I, like that. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool, uh, even though it kind of takes away from the fact that like Wonder Woman has been struggling to beat Steppenwolf. Yeah. It's kind of like downgrading her power. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, I don't think is necessary. And Aquaman is no he's no slouch. No, not at all. Um, so yeah, these are the kind of little issues that were there. But overall, um, the movie was very, very, very enjoyable. And these action sequences were very fun. And like there are some scenes there where you see the group like the group together and you're kind of like taken away a little bit in the sense of like I am actually seeing the fucking Justice, Justice League yep. on <laughs> like the big screen. I've been for waiting the first time in my life for this movie because a lot forever. of us have been waiting. And I know, like, we seem to have focused on a lot of the things that um that weren't necessarily tops. But for me, that is no representation of the movie. Um, yes, there are some issues, and like, yes, it's not going to be perfect, and yes, there'll be some people that will hate it. Um, but there's going to be some people that absolutely love it. Uh, I am. Definitely in the upper areas of loving it. Yeah. Um, the first thing that I thought of when it finished was I need to see that movie again. Yeah, same. And and for me to be like that, like it has to be pretty good. Yep. Um, is the story the best thing you're ever going to see? No. I mean, like it, it does have its issues, as I said, but man, whatever. Let's uh, move on to the post credit scenes. Oh, damn. So both of these things, I would say, well, probably at least one of them are yep. worth the price of admission in itself absolutely now well i don't know there's no point in talking about it because we're in spoilers but i was going to say make sure you stay right until the end but you've already seen this and if you haven't if you didn't stay right till the end oh you're you're fucked you're fucked and we're going to spoil it for you uh first end credit scene is the the classic race uh the flash and superman loved it just it's just just good fun yeah and it's still it's still like this young Barry Allen as well. Like he's still learning. Doesn't uh, even know what way he needs to be running. <laughs> yeah. Like that's how like I guess new he is to this. Like he doesn't know anything. Like literally anything. Yeah. Um so we get that and that's pretty cool. And then obviously the final scene, uh, we get Lex Luthor's back. That's meh, whatever. Uh, it's it's all right. I'm happy. I liked him. I'm happy ish. As I said to you, though, like as we were walking out, I just wish that Jesse Eisenberg took the opportunity to play it differently to what he did in Batman vs. Yeah. Superman because it's very, very similar. Yeah, you know, the, the high pitch, the the you know, the, the mannerisms, kinda, yeah, the mannerisms, the you know, the the topsy turvy voice and all that yeah. sort of stuff and all that sort of thing. It's like, you know, I just wanted him to come out of prison maybe a little bit harder and a little bit more determined to do what he wants and just like a little bit more of a of a goddamn man. Definitely. Um, but more important than all of that Lex Luthor shit is we see Deathstroke. Oh my goodness. And holy shit. Uh, it is pretty amazing. How much of a bonus do you think he would have got for keeping this quiet? Uh, because uh, there was like talks that like he's done. The well, character's see, well, gone. He might not have known for the longest time because this could have legitimately been a cut scene. Uh, that they decided to bring back in as a post Yeah, fair like, call. You know, you don't know. Um, but, man, like, they kept it quiet. Like, I, Deathstroke was not who I was thinking was going to pop up. I was thinking we we're going to see Darkseid, or I was thinking we we're going to see, like, uh, maybe Green Lantern, yep. or this, that, or the other. Deathstroke was not the person that, that popped up to in my mind. But uh, well and truly worth it. Looks like we're going to get some sort of, like, Legion of Doom. Yes. Which is pretty amazing. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that comes to fruition later I wonder on down the track. If that's going to be the next Justice League movie, Legion of Doom. Yeah, maybe. And you know, maybe maybe Or, or does it have to be Dark Side? I want it to be Dark Side. Yeah. Um just because I don't know <laughs> like seriously how many more DC movies we will get if they keep the- I I don't know like I don't want to say the movies are always bad or they're not well received, but they're not well received. Yeah. There's literally been one so far that has been well received. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, they're all financial successes. So yeah. I guess as long as they keep bringing in money, they're going to keep making the movies. I wouldn't mind steering away from the the CGI villain for a while. Yeah. Like, why not? Yeah. Have Lex. Have Deathstroke. Have. Oh, imagine you know, if we got Lex's super suit. Yeah. Like have Cheetah. Have like this. You know. Have all these like characters like that you can put in within the Legion and bring in a Vandal Savage. I don't know what you want to like what you want to do, but. Have them human characters, yeah, and, and have these like have it grounded and have it like a little bit more sort of you know like less 
you know, Wonder Woman fighting Ares, less, you know, Batman and Batman Superman and Wonder Woman fighting Doomsday. And then if you've got like, you know, the big city battle in Man of Steel and like all this sort of stuff, like keep it a little bit more grounded uh, and give us some cool shit like that. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. It'd be like an actual cartoon brought to life. Yeah, exactly. And that would be fun. That would be fun. Now, one thing we didn't talk about, and I know we've got to wrap it up. Green Lantern. Do they exist? Yes. Yes. Do you see them? Yeah, sort of. For like five fucking (laughs) seconds. They are. There is the one scene, of course, when the, it's like the flashback to when they first defeated Steppenwolf, and it's the Amazonians teaming with the Atlanteans and the Lanterns and all these sorts of things. And like, there, like, it's just, it is like nerd gasm central. This whole oh. scene, um, blink and you would miss it. Yeah. So there, there is a lot of stuff. And yes, there are Green Lanterns in this movie. But that is the only time you see them. Uh, but it is amazing. And you do see the ring piss you off do. and it goes and finds someone else. Who's it finding? Who knows? Oh. But I'm excited. That's for another episode, That Troy. is for another episode. So finally, rate it, hate it. Rate it. Rate it, rate it, rate it. And this is a real rate. Okay. Not a Thor rate. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not a Cade rate. It's a good rate. Uh, I also rate it, uh, obviously. I do want to go out and see it as quickly as I possibly can. Uh Am I still getting a Wolverine tattoo at this point in my life? Yes. Yep. Uh, it's not quite there for best of the year. Not the movie of the year. What is your movie of the year so far? It's still Logan. Still Logan? Yeah. Wonder Woman for me. Okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, I've got a very, like, very... It's a very, very close top three to four. Um, but, you know... The number one is still Logan, so still Look, getting a Wolverine tattoo, uh, you guys. Hit us up on Twitter, at Comic Con Pod, or on Facebook, and send in your Logan slash Wolverine tattoo recommendations for Troy. Oh, we've had some doozies already, my friend. Troy, that's going to do it for another episode of Comic Confidential, oh the podcast God. that they've been listening to for probably the last 18 hours, because that was a long review. It was a pretty long review, but hey, we had a lot to talk about. Hey, we had a lot to talk about, and I feel like we kind of had to make up for our Thor. Yeah, this is one of the biggest movies probably of our lives (laughs) so far. So, you know, you had to give it its just desserts. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to, you know, kind of do a terrible Troy piss. No. Yeah. I thought about it, but no. Uh, Now, look, I did ask the guys, as I spoke about earlier, for some rock questions. We've got some pretty good ones, so I'm going to read them out quickly. I want your quick response answers. Okay. We're just going to nail them out. Uh, Now... This is from Peter. Would a remake of The Rock work with Nick Cage playing Sean Connery and The Rock playing Nick Cage? Uh, Fuck you, Peter. Next question. (laughs) I would say no. Never touch The Rock. Don't remake that movie. It is brilliant. Leave it alone. Uh, Now, if... Now, I don't know how much you... I don't know how much you know wrestling, right? But if The Rock went back to the WWE for one good match at WrestleMania, this is from Chris, would you rather he face Styles, Shinsuke, or Rollins, or someone else... Uh, I'm going with the only other wrestler I know, <laughs> John silence. Cena. Why not have John Cena? Yeah. Let's have that Shazam Black Adam match we always wanted. Um, uh, then it becomes uh, which Rock vs Stone Cold match was your favorite? Do you know any WrestleMania 17 for me? Um, you know what I'm talking about. You need a life, mate. From Amy, uh, who is also one of the hosts of the Potterheads podcast. Why can't I eat as much as the Rock and still look fabulous? Hashtag science. Hashtag science, dude. Yeah, just science. You just don't have the genetics of the rock. Get over it. Yeah. Deal with it, Amy. (laughs) From Phil, uh, if the rock threw a rock, how far do you think the rock would go? All the way. Yeah. Some say that rock's still going. (laughs) Legend has it. Uh, From Sarah, do you smell what the rock is cooking? It doesn't matter if you smell what the rock is cooking. All right, let's move on. Uh, (laughs) Here's one that's actually not The Rock related, but I do want to ask you this question. Uh, Marvel Phase 4, depending on who survives, this is from Ian. Uh, do we want any or all Thor 4, Iron Man 4, or Captain America 4? And do we deserve a Vision, Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, Hawkeye, or Falcon movie? Uh, no to all them. All of them? Yep. I don't want another Iron Man movie. Yeah, well, because no one does. number three was just... I don't know how people like that movie. Uh, what was the other one? Thor, Thor 4, Captain uh, America 4? No. Nah. Captain America... Hmm... I want to know, Nad. Oh, yeah. I think that. heading into Phase Four, we need to ditch the old. I want the. I want a new in crew. With new, yeah. yeah. In with the new. Uh, do we deserve a Vision, Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, Hawkeye, or Falcon movie? No. Nah. Give us a Black Widow movie, goddamn it! No, it's probably too late now. It's way too late. They should have done it before. What are they going to do? Show us her in a Walker? Oh, why? She's not that old. Yeah, fuck off. 
Uh, and look, we do have one more. With releases such as Daredevil, Deadpool, and now The Punisher, do you think Marvel Disney will create more darker storylines to compete with or get into more adult oriented demographic from Sean? Nope. Uh, I do. Do you? Yep. I hope they do, but I don't think they will. I don't think Disney's going to like mess around with it. Like Unless it is actually stamped with Disney Studios, um, I don't think they will worry too much about what the content is like as long as it makes them some goddamn money. True that. Thank you for your questions, you guys. That is going to do it for another episode. Stay tuned for next week's show, uh, which is going to be a little bit of a weird one in the sense of, um, you know, like, Some might say it's getting recorded right after this. <laughs> it is It is pre-done. It's Stranger Things Season 2. It's our wrap of that. Uh, Cade will not be in the building. We're going to do this right now. Release it next week. So don't expect any goddamn news. Don't expect any listener questions. But we still want <laughs> you to tune in. Because we're going to wrap up Stranger Things Season 2, goddamn it. It's one of the biggest shows of the year. Uh, let's They've thank- been asking for it. They have been asking We're for delivering it, it mate. Uh, now, let's thank some people. Uh, let's thank the listeners, subscribers, and reviewers. You guys make the show happen. So, without you, so what's the point of doing it? 100 by 100, y'all. 100 by 100. Uh, social media is Facebook at Comic Confidential. Well, not at Comic Confidential. Search Comic Confidential. Uh, we have the listener community, which is a Comic Confidential listener community. Search that. We're there. Join. Do it. Do that. I might put that back on our Facebook page so yeah. people can find that again. Yeah, for sure. Instagram and Twitter at Comic Con Pod, uh, where you can fight with us, love with us, ignore us completely. Yeah. You can do whatever you want yeah, to do. Whatever. Okay. We have a website. That's ComicConPod.com. Past episodes, future episodes, and everything in between. If you really want to find where everything else is in between, that's at Patreon. And that's Patreon.com forward slash Comic Con Pod, where you get early access to the shows. You're going to get two in one this week. Two, two in one. one. Like Paul. Troy. Double up. Uh, uh, uh. Paul. Signed up. New Patreon. Thank you, Paul. Hey, Paul. We love you, man. Hey, po- Paul's got a podcast. Paul does have a podcast. Give, that, is- give that boy a good shout out. <laughs> I will give that boy a good shout out because it is actually one of my favorite podcasts. I don't listen to a lot because I don't have a lot of time because uh, a lot of my time and effort goes into this goddamn podcast. You got up at 5.30 this morning to read comic news. <laughs> I did. Uh, this is my life now. But Paul has a fantastic show. It is the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews podcast uh, with his co-host, Wayne, who is absolutely hilarious. Please, uh, if you listen to this show... Who's funnier? Well, it's different. It's kind of like you and me. Like uh, It's like choosing between your favorite children. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it is an absolutely fantastic show. I love it. Uh, you probably won't find a better movie slash TV review podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but seriously... Laughing makes it sound like you're like teasing. No, I'm laughing at us yeah. because it's true. Um, <laughs> Everyone's better than us, Troy. <laughs> But honestly, or, uh, hey, you know hey, what? There's let nothing. Me no, wait, wait. I need to say there's okay. nothing wrong with silver. There is nothing wrong with silver. I'm used to bronze more myself. <laughs> but uh, look, uh, all jokes aside, definitely go and check out that show. Uh, it's the Countdown Movie and TV Review Podcast. It's got Paul in it, and Paul's a Patreon supporter, so we love that guy. Yeah, good work. All right. <laughs> Blew his mind when he found out you could get early access to the shows. Yeah, he's like, "What? This many fucking days early?" Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, man." Sometimes. <laughs> Most times. Yeah, most times. You're doing well. You're doing well, champ. Uh, Hey, you guys, thanks for listening. As always, I'm Troy. I'm Cade. And this has been Comic Confidential. Cheers. Peace. We saw Justice League. Yeah, we did. (laughs) Oh, my God. What about our friend who pooed his pants? (laughs) (laughs) Unconfirmed. You You know who you are. Monash University. If you love this podcast, then head over to ComicConPod.com to check out the other incredible shows on our network. You can also support us on Patreon from as little as $1 a month. You'll get early access to all our shows, plus secret supporter content that's not available to the public. Head over to Patreon.com forward slash ComicConPod to find out more.